Okay. Let's talk about this. The biggest software development case ever, according to ZDNet, and uh, boy howdy, this is some shit. To summarize this case, Oracle sued Google because they believe that Google infringed on its copyright with the Java API. More specifically, they infringed, they copied the names, the groupings, and the organization of the Java API. Not the code itself, but the names, the groupings, and the organization. So the case rests on two things though. One, whether or not an API is copyrighted material. And two, whether or not Google's implementation of the Java API for Android is covered underneath fair use. And I'm gonna talk about both of those, so let's just start off with the first really pressing question. Is an API copyrighted material? It depends. So long as there's a possibility for the API to be re-implemented in a variety of different ways, then yes, an API should be copyrightable material. But is the Java API copyrightable? No, I don't believe it is. I don't believe that should be an argument. Oracle argues that Google could have re-implemented their API in an in, in numerous amount of ways. And that because they only implemented, they implemented the API in the same organization with the same groups and the same names that infringes on the copyright. And at first, when I was looking at this case, I agreed, but then I started looking a little bit deeper into it. And the problem that I'm taking with Oracle's argument is that it seems as though there's only one real way that Google could have implemented the Java API. And that Oracle's argument that they could have implemented it in several different ways is false. In fact, in one of the court proceedings, they even pointed out that there's three specific API calls that there's only one real way that Google could have called those APIs. And without them, there's just no way to use the Java language at all. And because of that, because there's only one method of implementing this API call, that that in fact is not copyrightable material. Oracle, it seems, from what I've gathered online, I don't believe Oracle ever gave an example of a re-implementation of the API. And this is my opinion, but I don't think they can because there's just no other way to do it. They're putting the burden of proof on Google's shoulders when if they're making the claim, if Oracle's making the claim, then it should be up to Oracle to demonstrate that it can be implemented. But they can't because there's only one possible way that Google could have done it. If It's just madness to me that they can make the argument. But let's assume that it is, which seems to be the current position that Google is in right now. Let's assume that yes, the Java API is copyrightable material. Can Google say that its implementation of the Java API, the Android API, is covered underneath fair use? Well, to answer that question, let me pose a question to you, viewer. Does Google have a very good understanding of what fair use is? I'm gonna read this to you. This is from Google's own website regarding fair use. Quote, courts typically focus on whether the use is transformative. That is, whether it adds new expression or meaning to the original or whether it merely copies from the original. This would imply using Google's own rationale, keep in mind, this is Google's, this is Google's own words on what fair use is, that because the names, the groups, and the organization of their Android API is almost exactly the same as the Java API, then their API is in fact not fair use. Now, none of that should matter because the Java API shouldn't even be considered copyrightable material, but if it comes to that, if it comes to the Supreme Court, like let's say the Supreme Court ends up in a tie and it gets passed to a lower court, lower court's already decided that it's 
against fair use. So Google just straight up loses. It doesn't even matter at that point. We'll see what happens when it comes to that. The most important thing right now is, like I said, the Supreme Court ruling, because I'm, I'm leaning towards it being a tie, right? I'm saying that of the eight justices, four of them agree that Google is fine, four of them disagree. And so if it ends up like that, then it gets past the lower court, in which case Google loses. But my hope is that Google wins just to just so we can avoid the subsequent legal shitstorm that's going to happen if that if that's the case. There's a moral to the story. There's a moral that all of us can take, actually. In fact, there's two morals. One, that Stalin was right. Again. And two, that all of this could have been avoided had Google just decided to adopt the GPL license. And to explain what I mean, let's give a little bit of context. Back when Google was first creating the Android API stuff, they approached the copyright holders, which was at the time Sun Microsystems, and they were given two options. One, they pay a large amount of money to license the Java API, in which case they can license it under whatever license they wanted to, or B, two, <laughs> whatever, or two, they could use the OpenJDK platform API that uh, Sun Microsystem was providing, but the problem that Google had with the OpenJDK API was that it was licensed under the GPL, meaning that if they were to use it, they would have to license their API under the GPL as well. And Google didn't want to do that. Google didn't want to do that because they were afraid that GPL software would dissuade hardware vendors from wanting to adopt the Android API, Android software platform, and incorporate it into their hardware. But Google, Google messed up on one really important thing. Google failed to realize one very, very important thing. If your software is profitable and it's backed by a multi-billion dollar corporation, hardware vendors won't care if it's licensed under the GPL. Google failed to realize that if hardware vendors were given a choice between A, adopting a free and open source software platform that may be licensed under the GPL, but it's gonna make them millions upon millions of dollars anyway, or B, nothing at all, I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna pick A instead of B. Like, literally, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? The ultimate irony is that they ended up adopting the OpenJDK platform anyway. So all of that, all of that effort to try and avoid having to use OpenJDK to avoid the GPL was pointless. All of it was pointless. And all this brings me back to what I was saying about Stallman and Stallman's whole idea behind creating the GPL. You see, Stallman foresaw, or he really predicted that the biggest hurdle in the face of software development was copyrights. And that once copyrights become implemented, once become widespread, that is gonna create a legal death spiral for everybody. And a perfect example of that is this exact case. Talking about this case again, it's hard to say what the outcome is gonna be. People will like to think that it's the end of software development as we know it, which which is kind of true, but they, they're saying all sorts of other stuff too. Like you go on Reddit and people are gonna be like, this is the end of open source software. It's all over, guys. We had a good 30 year run, but it's all going down a hill and Oracle's to blame, which I think is a little bit of hyperbole. I'm pretty sure software development models are just gonna change where people are gonna be like, no more, no more proprietary shit. We're just gonna strict, stick with purely open source stuff, but that's just my hope. Maybe everything does go to a more proprietary model. I don't know. People say it's also gonna be the end of like Wine or emulators or like React OS reverse engineering efforts, but I, I don't see that happening either. On the positive, if Google wins, then all that's avoided and everything just continues as normal. But I, I, I'm not saying that because I, I like Google. I'm just saying that because there's more important things at stake than whether or not Google wins or Google loses. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. I hope you all take care. Peace.